Namaste Galactic family. Welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. Come on in guys. I hope you use the portal on your way into this dimension and come on into a remote view session. Um, essentially, this is kind of a wrap up of my notes that I have taken from remote viewing Vatican City, what I'm calling Vaticonia. Uh, for about the last few days, I've just been um, scanning and tuning in and between um, doing other things, trying to keep coming back to um, looking deeper into some of the underground rooms and passageways, looking deeper into some of the energy structures and the grids and, you know, just scanning deeper into this fifth dimensional black spiral stargate um, underneath the Vatican. And so this is my picture that I drew up of Vatican city. I just did a little drawing just so I can kind of highlight some of the things that I've been seeing. So please don't laugh at my artwork today as this is, um, definitely not <laughs> done on a level of skill or, um, you know, I wasn't going for, uh, anything to, to give this a wow factor. I was just trying to present the information that I was seeing via a uh, remote view. So I hope you guys understand. And I know you guys do. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, this is going to be somewhat of a high psychic Intel video, and, um, this is going to be an R rated conversation today. Um, I think anything regarding, you know, uh, fifth dimensional black spiral stargate that is a Draco stargate. Um, you know, anything that's talking about the, in, in the encryptedness of the Jesuit orders, anything talking about what's kind of playing out, um, in the unseen, um, in the occult and, um, in the grids is in terms of seals and tampering and, and, um, beast machine mechanics and things that are running in the earth's grids. Essentially, this is going to make it a, a R-rated, uh, spiritual remote view, uh, follow-up essentially. So, um, I always do put disclaimers on these types of videos, um, that I can't prove or disprove this information. So, you know, therefore, if you follow along, you do so at your own gnosis and, um, you know, I'm just, uh, scanning and tuning in over from the United States. So, um, clearly if, if I was here, uh, locationally on the grounds of Vatican city, um, I would, I would have definitely much more, uh, deeper Intel and much more insight into, um, this grid network here, but this is what I can tune into. And this is what I can pick up on from the location that I am. So that's what I'm going to present today is uh, the information that I have intuitively, uh, metaphysically, uh, theoretically for some of you. And, uh, you know, ultimately um, coming from a remote view, also a little bit of um, astral channeling as well. Um, the uh, energies, the deities, the spirits that have come through. I'm going to be relaying all of that information to you guys today. So be sure to put a like on this video, comment on this video, share this video. So that way others can tune into the Intel and the information today. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notifications bell. If you've seen my last cosmic grid update, you will know why I have chosen this location to do a remote view on. So if you haven't seen that last cosmic grid update, it was quite long, um, but it is jam packed with information. So I highly recommend you go and watch my last update if you haven't. And of course, I will leave links in the description as always, but essentially a lot is coming up right now in terms of Vaticonia, Vatican News, uh, Popal News, um, and all of the encrypto Jesuit orders and the Dark Brotherhood squid nations continuing to reinforce the strongholds of the Draco planetary implants and seals that I am convinced are running the height of the evolution of the beast machines, the beast mechanics all over the earth's grids. They have centralized capitals of these seals and implants that do seem to run on a Saturnian uh, organic matrice network that does seem to be embedded into the earth's grids. This is coming from the inside of the earth 
and manifest manifesting on the crust, manifesting on the surface. And why I feel they're able to distribute these Draco planetary implants and seals so globally is because it really is due to the planetary positioning that the Vatican is located. And, you know, really all of the centralized locations that do seem to be running off of Draco implants and seals, this would be with uh, the United Kingdom. Um, we have the monarchy seals, you know, we have Buckingham Palace. We have a lot of places in the UK. Um, not all that are, you know, tampered or, you know, negative generating type ley lines or soul river lines in the earth's grids, but there are, you know, hives, hives of um, these particular types of collect collectives that are empowered off of the Draco planetary implants and seals. So we have, you know, the UK, um, we have Vatican City, areas of London, um, and also running this down into um, Africa and some areas down in Africa and um, generating ley lines that go off to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And ultimately throughout the, throughout, throughout the world, the, uh, the fact that we have oceans in between continents um, cannot stop a matrix system that is an internal system that is um, empowering dark vortices from the internal structures with the power of 10 earths. This is what the Saturnian matrix comes with is it comes with this uh, and why it can uh, power the uh, power central points, the center points of the satanic pillars that are used for global blood sacrifice. Pedogonia, Pedo gates, uh, I'm calling it Pedo Pedagonia gates that run through the U.S. and Washington, D.C., all the way down through Canberra, Australia, um, calling these the satanic pillars used for global, global blood sacrifice offerings, which are used for summoning demonic spirits and satanic alien forces that actually enter this realm through the stargate that exists underneath the Vatican, but is ultimately empowered by the Saturnian organic matrice that is inside the Earth's grids. Now I'm calling that a organic Saturnian matrice because it is planetary, um, but it has been taken over by archons and planetary archons. And so um, that's how these dark spiral vortexes are ultimately upheld is through um, several things, you know, through the, through the military orders, through the secret societies, through their uh, arachnid webbing technologies, um, through lots of different te technologies and techniques that they use. Um, and we are gonna talk about some of those that the Vatican is using here. It does seem that they are using, um, and sorry guys, my notes are a little scattered today, but I am, Looking to present the best video for you guys today, honestly. Um, I am a little all over the place with my notes as there's just so much information with this, but you can see in this picture here how we have a keyhole. It looks like a key, a hole that a key would go into a lock, essentially. Um, this is uh, architecturally designed. Um, so that they, we, they can run lock and key technologies. They're also running squaring the circle technologies inside um, ovum, uh, squaring the circle inside ovum technologies here as well. Give me just a second. I have another note I need to go get. So you can see um, that, and you can clearly see the, the um, lock and key technologies here with the squaring the circle inside the ovum. So it does seem that all squaring the circle technologies is based upon sexual energy of the hive. So this is really one of the core fundamental powering energies of the Vatican is that um, through those power sources of the dark brotherhoods, um, they're ultimately sexualizing their stargate. Um, they're sexualizing their needle points, their obelisks, they're squaring the circle technologies, and um, they're doing it by, um, you know, dominating and overpowering um, the feminine energies here. 
Um, and so a lot kind of came up as I was remote viewing in regards to that. And I think that, you know, continues to show quite deeply through their sacrificial rituals that they have going on, you know, um, with uh, Biden meeting with uh, the Pope the other day, um, I felt that was symbolic to the Patagonia gates through the U.S. and the Washington, D.C., their launching of their nursery rhyme crimes, their mass Patagonia harvesting rituals. Some of you know that was kicked off with the 14 to 21 year olds at the Astro World sacrifices, and then they were moving on shortly after that, I think a day or two after that, um, into opening up the 511 gates. And um, uh, so this is all being done through their needles, okay? And that extenuates symbolically through many different realms of the 3D reality. I know you guys will pick up on what I am saying there, but there is a sexualizing energy that is behind and empowering this thrust of um, uh, 511 gates that opened up. And um, through the obelisk sexualizing of the Earth's grids, uh, I talked about that in the last update and how they're using these points, these sexualizing of the Earth grid points to empower uh, their dark ley lines and their global currents. We talked about the Devil's Tower uh, being one of these ley lines that they use. And it's not that De Devil's Tower itself is a um, bad place. It's actually very spiritual and a very sacred place to the natives, but it is being used as one of their dark generating ley lines to Vaticonia. And um, so what I have come to see about that is, so Devil's Tower is, and again, this is, labeled as conspiracy theory and that they've proven that none of these things actually exist or whatever and whatnot but you know not according to the natives not in court not according to the indigenous that you know devil's tower was never actually called devil's tower that it was um an honoring to the bear because it was like a bear scratching post and bears would you know it was a it was just a very sacred place that they honored um, that this was potentially um, a great tree, a great grandmother world tree that was one of the biggest, um, I think they call them gor gorgantuan trees, but this used to be a giant mother tree that had an extension of a very vast root and network system that went, you know, you can see in this picture here, four miles deep. This is a picture that I had pulled up uh, regarding the Devil's Tower online, um, just highlighting the root system and the network underneath it that, you know, this is kind of like, you know, in the movie Avatar, where we had the, the great grandmother tree, and they, they tried to chop down this tree, because this was, you know, how they connected to God's source, this is how they connected to um, their home. And so, you know, um, we really don't know. But if we look back, uh, through everything that's happened and the disconnection and the loss of organic timelines, organic consciousness, organic biology, we can see that, um, you know, this may have been intentionally cut um, and fractured and um, severed uh, from the, the system because there was some sort of deep planetary gnosis that this tree was actually feeding a much greater uh, net, network system of consciousness and, and uh, crystal consciousness as well. It's said that these caverns inside the Devil's Tower um, actually take you down into um, crystal caverns that are inside and underneath the Devil's Tower, but essentially um, all of the corruption had come in and it renamed this very sacred area, the Devil's Tower, to basically, um, you know, tamper the energy fields here, tamper the frequency, tamper the vibration, and ultimately cut off and disconnect those connections to the great mother tree that was once here. Um, and so this could be one way that they have turned this ley line network dark and have used it to um, empower the Saturnian matrices here in the earth grids and ultimately the draconic stargate essentially. So I thought that was something that was kind of pertinent to talk about. Um, if anyone has any more intel on this, please feel free to just drop it down in the comments. So 
I want to talk about why all of this is really ultimately coming up. You know, Vatican uh, news right now is something that is making a lot of global headlines right now. If you are paying attention to the indigenous community, if you're paying attention to international uh, court orders, if you're paying attention to um, the United Nations and you know the United Nations itself is wrapped up into a lot of this Vaticonian, um, pedo, pedo, pedo get in, uh type stuff. I mean, just the other day, I seen a bunch of posts that the UN was forcing children to give them inappropriate favors and acts um, just to receive food from the United Nations. And this, when you Google that, I mean, that seems to be a problem that's going back all the way to 2013, 2014, 2015. There's still relevant posts going on about this. So this is something that they haven't ultimately stopped. Um, so I think that there are many branches and extensions of ways in which Peter Geddon is affecting um, all kinds of these uh, organizations that are supposed to be doing the right thing. Um, but why the Vatican has come up so much is because if you, you know, look at some of these links that I have pulled up here, this one is um, breaking global news. This happened on November 1st. There was an arrest order and a warrant issued against Pope Francis by international courts, $10,000 reward and amnesty offered to detain Jorge Borgoglio for crimes against humanity. That's Pope Francis. Um, I actually watched this little video of this guy speaking here, but he's talking about how um, they've they filed in uh, international courts, uh, like natural peace order courts, to, uh, for crimes against humanity with a $10,000 uh, reward for his capture and is to prosecute any Catholic official or clergy who assists in the detaining. A copy of the order and warrant follows. Our prosecutor has in his possession documented evidence and eyewitness affidavits to attest that Jorge Borgoglio's personal complicity in child torture and trafficking, ritual killing, medical genocide, obstruction of justice and general command, responsibility for mass murder and other crimes perpetrated by the Church of Rome. Borgoglio is subject to prosecution as an individual, as an in indictable individual under common and international law, and he will be prosecuted by the court, by our court. We will, we are offering a reward and immunity from prosecution to anyone and especially to any of Bur Goglio's church associates who assist us in detaining and prosecuting him. You can find this on murderbydecree.com. This is the uh, actual order down here. And I do believe that a lot of this came up. This is through the International Common Law Court Justice. Um, this really came up because there was an article that actually came out on uh, June 6th, 2021, but why they are doing this is because there was, it looks like there was a bunch of indigenous children's graves found at a church run school. Um, all of this has gone down in Canada. Um, it looks like there was a school that found, I guess, hundreds of uh, indigenous graves. So I think they said the remains of 215 children of Kamloops Indian Residential School in the province of British Columbia. Um, but I think they said there was more than that. When I kept on reading, there was actually 750 graves that they found. Um, and then it looks like from 2008 to 2015, they found an estimated 4,000 to 6,000 students died as a result of neglect or abuse in the country's resident schools. Um, these are all in Catholic run residential schools. Um, and so this is why uh, the indigenous are just not having it. They're basically stepping up, they're filing for international orders and they are trying to at least, if anything, keep the Pope off of their lands. Um, they're saying if he even so dares as steps foot um, on Canada, he's you see November 6, 2021, Pope barred from Canada by indigenous nations, uh, native elders and peacekeepers will aid in his arrest. And so 
It's for the elders have also pledged to aid in the arrest of the Pope because of his Catholic Church's unpunished massacre of our people and our land and his personal guilt in the ongoing torture, trafficking, and death of our children. And so, you know, they're, the indigenous seem to be uh, doing their uh, part in, uh, in fighting for justice, fighting for, um, you know, rectification of all of these wrongdoings done under the uh, Jesuit orders, done under the dark squiddy brotherhoods, and done under um, the fish gods. You know, people always keep asking me, you know, when are things going to get better? When are things going to change? When is the light going to win? And honestly, the way I feel about that every time I get that question is, um, is tough love. That's immediately what I get is tough love. It, it's going to win when everyone is willing to fight for the light. You know, we can't just sit back and do nothing and think that the light is going to win and everything is going to be fine. You know, everyone really has to say enough is enough. It is very much a tough love approach because it's not what people want to hear. People like their comfort. People like, um, uh, you know, the are bonded to the AI invasion um, and to the cyborg invasion. And so it's it's tough because people don't want to live, a, uh, give up the comforts and actually go and fight for something, you know, as long as it's not on their front doorstep. You know, the fact that these graves weren't found on their front doorstep, the fact that the Patagonia 511 gates isn't necessarily on their front doorstep. You know, we still have a choice to go uh, at this point, depending on where you are, you know, within the United States and all over the world, you know, people still feel like they still have somewhat of a choice here, whether to um, be a part of the harvesting of the loosh and things like this. But at the, at the end of the day, um, once those restrictions clamp down tighter and tighter and tighter, and it is on your front doorstep, you know, it's going to change when everyone wakes up to the grooming tactics of their abusers and, and quit allowing themselves to be groomed um, and conditioned to accepting um, new boundaries of things. So I personally feel that the core of corruption has to completely shift and change from within the core itself. That means that the core of human beliefs has to shift. The core of human hearts have to shift. Um, the core of those hearts to every being who sits at the head of the Vatican, who sits at the head of the inorganic timelines, our government, capitalism, the who, the military, education systems, legal systems, the webbing technologies going back through the secret societies, the core of the unconscious human has to shift. And that means all of these things that basically exist to uh, uphold the things that we cannot tolerate, right? Because we're not gonna find unity through tolerating all of this. Um, I talked about that in one of my other updates. Um, we can't find unity through tolerance and obedience. Okay, there has to be an uprising. There has to be a shift and a demand for change that the internal structures of these gate systems are redefined from within. I do kind of believe we might be starting to see some of the beginning of some of these changes because the truth is that changes are technically on the way, but all of this is going to take a lot of time in human years, which is something that we feel like we don't have. We feel a strong etheric battle, like we are up against a clock. We feel a strong etheric battle, like we're up against time. Um, there is an impatient, there is an anxiety that is itching underneath the surface of the Great Pacific that is ex extending into the core base frequency of humanity. Um, so patience, um, it's all a part of this. So, I mean, the truth is all of this is going to take a lot of time in human years, which feels like an eternity for us. We want to see changes in our lifetime. But these changes really can't happen in our lifetime because they are not riding within the same time frequency, timelines, I guess you could say, 
uh, as the majority of the 3D reality fields. These changes are happening within the monadic structures of the Earth's planetary fields, which exists more within generational timelines. So this changes that we all seek has to come within generational shifts. And I do feel that this Pope, um, you know, on some level, he is playing a part in that. Um, some things that I have seen as I've looked in when I'm, you know, looking for good things, things that could uh, re- uh, mean change is that, um, you know, everything that the Pope does right now, this affects the future generations of Popes to come and the entire community of Vaticonia affecting the rest of the world. So some good things that I did see and some things that I think that need to happen. Um, so I'm just keeping my little picture of this up here. We're just going to look at that while I talk about this a little bit. But um, essentially is that the Pope has appointed the first woman bishop ever who is going to be under secretary to the Synod Synod of Bishops. Her name is Natalie Bicourt, and she is from France, and she will have voting rights within the Vatican. So this kind of opens up a small door of the divine feminine presence in the Vatican. You know, that's a big problem that there is no feminine uh, presence here in operation. So we uh, do have um, a female presence that's stepping in. Um, also, there's another divine feminine. Her name is Raffaella Petrini, an Italian nun, has been appointed to oversee administration operations. There is a secretary uh, as a secretary general, which makes her the highest ranking woman in the world's smallest state. It makes her deputy mayor of her city. So I do feel that these are some positive changes of transformation in the Vatican. Is it enough? Not nearly enough to see these uh, big monadic shifts that we all want to see happen. But essentially what we need to see come into power, what we need to see happen is we need to see a lot more divine feminines rise into powerful positions. We need to see a female pope, essentially. Um, personally, that's how I feel. I feel a woman needs to walk through the golden gate in Jerusalem. I have, you know, said that on some of my other, uh, remote views. I believe when I was remote viewing the temple Mount in Jerusalem, that I did see a divine feminine walk through as the third Messiah through the golden gate in Jerusalem, but essentially, you know, this comes back to control structures because that, that, that gate, that golden gate in Jerusalem is ultimately being blocked by the powers that be that come from this Stargate system here in Vatican city. So, you know, it's interesting. There actually used to be a female Pope. Her name was Pope Joan and they actually made her a fictional story. And then they removed her from the popal list to ensure all future female popes were male. I believe this happened in like 1099 BC and they did write about her, but then they tried to remove it from the books in 13th century BC. Um, Essentially she had to disguise herself as a man to be able to become the Pope. So the story goes that she ended up giving birth And then they found out about her true identity. So they ended up stoning her to death, stoning her to death. (sighs) Makes me really wonder about that a little bit. So it is said this energetically is where the Catholic church basically betrayed childbearing and women. Okay, this is major, major ninth dimensional planetary biological human biological hooks that they place in the ninth dimensional field. I've always talked about this being a very powerful Draco motherhood wound in the ninth dimensional field that I've seen in a lot of divine feminines um, from several uh, removal sessions that I've done. And I'm starting to see that this hook and wound uh, came from the Catholic church, because the Catholic church betrayed childbearing and women. And because of this, they actually celebrate it uh, with a four-day fast. So they have a particular four-day fast here in Rome that is, uh, came from uh, the fast of the female Pope. Um, it's encrypted there. They wouldn't come out and say this four-day fast is the fast of the female Pope, but this is where their traditions ultimately stemmed from. As this was, um, they seen it as something that they needed to eradicate. Okay. 
Um, so it just, I don't know how that leaves a taste in your mouth, but that just kind of irks me to my core. That really ties into some more things that we're going to talk about. I, like I said, I've been remote viewing the Vatican for the last few days. So I'm going to pull up my other, uh, map that I drew up my one that I did myself. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of just start going over some of my remote viewing notes and just talking to you guys about this. I'm actually, uh, like I said, I've I've technically have already been remote viewing it. So as I tune in back into my notes, I kind of go back into remote viewing and I kind of also channel off that more things kind of come to fruition for me. I start to see more. It's kind of once you, you know, access the telepathic vision of the contact point of awareness, it's really easy to just kind of go back into it again and kind of go deeper each time that you look at it. So yeah, I've been looking at it over the last three days you know, this isn't something that you can just bring all this information all in at once. You're gradually kind of uh, inducted into it. And as you look deeper into it, you receive more information. Um, I've been seeing a lot of the underground tunnel systems running from the Vatican City down to the Tigris River. Um, It did, when I was removing it, it did look like there was two main tunnel areas that went down to the river systems. It, It seemed that there was um, maybe like a safety network that was in place for the Pope to uh, get him, uh, if something were to happen, to get him actually removed from Vatican City and go into these underground tunnels that go down to the river systems. So that's kind of what these blue lines are down here at the bottom coming down from Vatican City. And I was doing something last night Um, something called automatic writing. It's something that I like to do when I do remote viewing as well. So I'm just going to go over, like I said, those notes. So when I first scanned into Vatican City, and um, yeah, guys, if you have astral shields that you feel that you need to put around you when you listen to this, like I told you, this is is an R-rated remote view. Um, I I highly recommend doing that. I have been using a lot of protection as of myself lately, I do find that there is, is a lot of uh, heightened EMF and radio uh, active decay when you start going into these systems, these tunnel systems, they all are highly radioactive. Hives particularly are radioactive. The Kaaba was highly radioactive. So when you do things like this, you definitely want to be using EMF protection. You want to use crystals. Um, and you want to use your astral shields. You want to call upon the highest um, within your field. I simply just call upon my own avatar, my own planetary body to oversee. Um, as I do feel that this is the most expanded version of myself personally and my higher self aspects that I can tune into that's beyond the 10th dimensional field. So that's kind of who I tune into as an overseer of protection. Um, yeah. And calling your divine team when you're doing stuff like this, you definitely want to be protected when you are diving into something as serious as a global hive, which this is what this is. And So what I was seeing last night is that there are actually two large gate doors around the perimeters of the Vatican City. So you can see here, I have etheric gates of fire. Every time I would close my eyes um, and, and look into Vatican City, I would actually see fire burning around these large wooden doors. The wooden doors themselves weren't catching fire, but it seems that all this etheric fire was just kind of coming out around these closed doors. So I drew these doors with the little fire squigglies around um, the Vatican City. Now the doors did appear to be closed. And if you guys hear noises in the background, it's just because my daughter and my dog are just like kind of running around and things. Um, (laughs) Sorry, guys. It's just my house is full and, um, they are here with me. So, you know, I do do this in the other room, but they, you know, they do just kind of come in and, you know, do their thing, check on me, you know, come in and play with the puppy for a minute, things like this. But, um, uh, 
And, and speaking of that, um, I do set a lot of shields of protection around my children as well. Um, these types of spirits, these types of entities, they do, and I will be really honest with you guys, if you start to get involved in this type of occultism, if you start to kind of look deeper into these darker entities and these darker spirits and, you know, the Draco and Saturnian matrices and the Archons, you know, if you are a threat to them, they do try to um, attack you from within. They try to attack your internal personal life. Like it may seem like these outside forces are coming in, but they're really trying to get in and hook you from the inside. So if you do have little ones in the house and you're looking into these things, you definitely want to set protection shields and fields around the little ones. Um, I have been working a lot with the scales of justice. I've been placing literal physical uh, statues of scales of justice, basically all around my house. I have about three of them right now. You can see in some of my energy updates that I do, I have a uh, justice warrior woman that sits behind me. And I also have two more uh, with me right now on my desk as we speak. I do feel that in terms of symbolic encoding, that the scales of justice right now are very activated and very active and that this is what is working through Vatican City as we speak, particularly with the indigenous stepping up in the way they are with the international laws of justice to, uh, you know, seek justice for, you know, over 60,000 children, supposedly indigenous children. So this symbolism is something that is highly encoded to Vatican City right now. And if you are a grid and gatekeeper, I would work with that symbol codes. Um, you know, um, a lot of us have been doing group sessions, group grid work sessions to come around these gate systems and to try to clear out um, dark energy. And, you know, a lot of us have been doing that work, but so if you are doing that, I would say work with the symbol codes of the scales of justice. But anyways, back to what I've been seeing remote view. Um, I seen that there were etheric gates of fire. They were closed, but it felt like they were on the brink of bursting open. It felt like they were holding back from being opened essentially. And it felt like these wooden looking gate doors meant something much, much deeper. Like they tied deeply into warfare and religion and the fact that they were shut actually meant something. The fact that the fire was coming out of the frames of the doorways, that this meant something even bigger as well. And what I seen through those doors was that there were specific gatekeepers in Rome that were locked inside their temples. So I didn't draw little temples inside this Vatican city outline here, but I seen that there were stations of temples that had gatekeepers locked inside these temples, um, almost as if they were held captive under fire, almost as if they um, were held behind these closed doors in their own individual temples. And whether these gatekeepers, these Roman gatekeepers wanted out or not, it was, it seemed irrelevant. It seemed like that there was some sort of soul binding to that fire. And the fact that it was coming out of the frames of the doors, this also meant something as well too, because of what these gatekeepers seem to be in control of in terms of their task. These gatekeepers, they held gatekeeping tasks to things like new beginnings and endings. They seem to have control over earthly astral gates. Um, and I'm talking, this goes all the way down to architecture. So gates of temples, gates of mosques, gates of churches, gates of monasteries, gates of coliseums. Coliseum seems to be a big one that they hold uh, power over coliseums. And these are coliseums, like these rows of coliseums are what you see out front of political buildings and things like this. So there is um, these gatekeepers, 
in Vatican City have control over these globally using the currents through the organic Saturnian matrix system. I keep calling it an organic Saturnian matrix system because of the planetary fields that this, if you could see this is like a gridding system, an etheric gridding system implanted into the earth's organic grid system that comes with the power of 10 earths. So whether it's working on the side of anything, karma, generational karma, uh, global karma, collective karma, you know, social karmic blueprints, um, going into um, uh, the, the management of gate systems, whether they're positive gate systems, stargate systems, um, negative gate systems, dark gate systems, black spiral gate systems, it doesn't matter. That Saturnian matrix system is going to empower whatever frequencies coming through those systems with the power of 10 Earths. When it is, when it is tipped towards the uh, more magnetic, magnetic energy, it's it's pulling everything to a central power point. So if we have negative gate systems, those are enhanced by that Saturnian organic matrix system in the earth that pulls and actually makes it more powerful. So it does seem like they're using these forces to generate power, that the core fundamental frequency or base frequency is that the Saturnian system is ultimately infiltrated and tampered itself that goes back to the planetary version of this. I've seen this. Um, if you look into the books of the, um, the ring makers of Saturn, the ring makers of Saturn talks about the uh, vehicles that are operating inside uh, Saturn's rings and how they have the power to devour celestial bodies and things like this. Um, but essentially, all of this is important because they're basically blocking these passageways with the uh, power of these gatekeepers inside of these temples. They're blocking passageways to prevent celestial bodies from coming through them. Um, these are all a part of the beast machine mechanic technologies, lock and key technologies, squaring the circle technologies, um, preventing and blocking passageways and gateways. So they have a lot of control over gates of transitions, gates of time, gates of duality, gates of doorways, gates of passageways, and gates of frames. And this is where I feel that that etheric fire coming out of the actual doorway, the frames seem to be important because it's one way they can control the containers and the grid cells in realities. Because if they can control the power in between frames, if they can control reality in all ways here, basically they control the frames because our lenses go through frames. And if they master the frame, then they can alter the lens in which way everyone sees. And so this is a primary focus, it seems here for the gatekeepers in Vaticonia. And this is coming through the robbed men who burn and fire in their temples and basically hold the power of these gates. So, you know, you know, how, what, how, and what we're supposed to be doing as, as, um, those looking in, into this, um, again, you know, we need to be, um, just observing. I think ultimately observation is key because it's a biofeedback system into greater fields of the monadic structures. Okay. So as we just observe these things, um, and things pass through human judgment themselves, you know, disgrace, core of intention, what it's being used for, how it's not assisting humanity, things like this, right? There's a biofeedback system that is taking place simply just through observation that is assisting the evolution of humanity and the collective. So when I scan into Vatican City right now, I what I see is a lot of, so just looking at my picture here, I, I kind of rescan in a little bit. Um, I see a lot of hosted planes of worlds simultaneously existing. It does seem like there's a lot of, there's like um, three major realms pertaining to three levels of reality that they dominate in. Because of that, I see a lot of pressure around the Vatican. I didn't draw this in the picture, but um, I seen a lot of black electromagnetic smog that kind of was just surrounding 
Vatican City itself, it did seem like it was um, more of like an international global pressure um, that came in like a deity form, almost like as if it was creating one one global deity form to close into and collapse into the walls here. So as I was remote viewing in, Um, I was hearing a lot of aching and creaking in the walls and the buildings themselves. And it just felt like a lot of moaning of spirit that vibrates through the bodies here. It felt like a global, a global uh, aching of spirit that was like crashing into the walls. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to Vatican City, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me that say they have been to Vatican City and that they just really didn't have good experiences here. People were rude, um, disregardful, um, that there was like a stale energy in the air. You know, the oxygen just felt cold and, um, you know, like there was a a great lack of empathy and, and just a disregard for, you know, uh, human humility, vulnerability, emotions, people seem to be just very stone faced, stone walled. Um, the, uh, the, the response of the feedback that I've got of people saying who have visited said that it just doesn't feel very inviting and that they honestly would never go back here, that it just really creeped them out. Um, so, you know, I think that's something to take note of. When I started scanning into those different planes that were existing in Vatican City, the first plane that I tuned into was Vatican Necropolis. So that seemed to go down into dwells within the grottoes. So you can see all these little like blue notches I kind of put everywhere and I put graves and catacombs. It seemed like underneath those there were you know, like, uh, it seems like wet pools of cold, dark water. And it felt like there was a network of burial grounds and graves. And it felt like, as I was going into it, it felt like they wanted me to call it the city of the dead, that Vatican city itself is the city of the dead. And I was going to draw actually a big circle around this whole thing, because it seemed like these graves and catacombs actually extended up all around like the hill up all around this this is this this is essentially like a giant cemetery that was the the initial feeling that I felt going in here this is like a giant cemetery um I kept getting images uh that seemed to highlight like hidden nun cults that were producing nurseries for sacrifices so as I tuned into the graves, it seemed like these graves were a lot of sacrificed of the young. They seemed like sacrificed children. They seemed like sacrificed babies. Um, and it seemed like there was like maternal bloodline affiliations to nuns, to Sicilian Italian women. Um, and that like a lot of these graves and catacombs were like dead babies of priests, like they were sacrificing their own children here, um, like secretly having intimacy with nuns and then sacrificing their own children in these graves and catacombs. And this is a way that they generate their powers by sacrificing their own offspring. I know this is sick. I know this is sick, you guys, and this is disturbing and it's hard to listen to. Um, I get just so saddened and just disgusted as I'm like looking deeper into it, um, honestly. Um, One thing that I noticed was that the Pope did seem to spend a lot of time gracing his presence in these graveyards. I just, as I kind of closed my eyes and tuned more into the area, I could see like a hologram of him passing through the headstones, um, you know, just reflecting on them, like tuning into them, like generating his core power from them. Um, And another thing that I picked up was that this energy or this frequency did seem to go back to that Pope Joan, that original female Pope. And 
the core frequency of this really went back to the church abandoning the childbearing of women. And so I could see how they were running in versals through this. I could see how this was running in versals on their calling policies, right? How they don't believe in um, abortion and, and things like this. Um, but this had a lot to do with, it seemed like this was trickery. It seemed like this was illusion. This was um, that there was elusive inversion running within um, reversal global currents that actually pushes specific agendas to benefit their agenda, because this ultimately goes back to them wanting to, wanting to consume their offspring. This is 100% Draco genetics, Draco um, diabolical uh, spiritual basis and foundation to things that feed their sterilization programs, feed their forest breeding programs, feed their overlord structures and systems of the Piscean overlords, you know, the squid gods, their uh, fish gods. Um, all of this goes back to really back to Draco genetics. And um, so they, what they want to do is what I've seen, what they want to do is they want to basically rip them from the organic mother. Okay. Because they feel like it pulls out her genetics out of the baby. They do this because this happens in their culling processes. Um, they want to pull the mother's genetics because the mother's actually coming, bringing forth the divine feminine God technology principle, right? So they want to pull this out of the offspring. So the earlier that they can do this in their culling processes, the better for them. Often this will happen later in a child's life after they've gone through sterilization or even forced breeding programs. Um, but essentially that's what they're trying to do. This is a Draco agenda that at its core and at its roots, the younger, the younger they can take a child from a mother is better in their eyes for sacrificial ritual. So yeah, guys, this stuff is deep. This stuff is at, at the core of, you know, Satanism here on this earth and Luciferianism here on this earth. Unfortunately, it does exist here. I mean, I don't know what I want, what you guys want me to say. Like it does exist here on this earth. And, um, this is some of the, the stuff that that's being done that that contributes to it and why these things have to be reformed from within why a female pope needs to step into Vatican City. OK, you think a female pope would allow this to continue to go on? Probably not unless she was inducted under the Squid Brotherhood and they stripped her um, or MK ultra her basically is probably what they would do anyways. But what's happening here is. There is a lot of worshiping of the dead here, and they're drawing their energy up off this um, Vatican City, and they're filling the entirety of the air that everyone breathes in Vatican City with this stale snobbery, um, this stale ignorance, um, and this child sacrifice, the Patagonia gates. This is this gate is a sick, sick vortex. This is a Patagonia Armageddon sexually powered fifth dimensional black spiral stargate. And um, in this plane and field existing within this, they were also showing me an upside down cross. So I didn't draw it on here, but it was right over the basilica itself. It was an, uh, an inversion of the crucifixion. And that seemed to tie all the way down into St. Peter's grave. So St. Peter is buried underneath here. And there was this upside down crucifixion cross that went all the way down underneath the Vatican. And this energy seemed to be at the core of the entire Vaticonia. So this isn't just a gate site, guys. This is a hive mind. This is a hive mind of worship. This is the nest itself. This is the nest of the globe. And, um, you know, this is, we talk about being plugged in, the inorganic being plugged into the hive. They're being plugged in to operate from Patagonia gates, 
Um, this ties into transgenderism, transhumanism. Transgenderism is just their way of ushering in transhumanism. So there's a lot of agendas and steps and processes in, in, into that. Um, but they are plugging the inorganic into this particular spiral, into this particular hive. The squiddlers, everything is pulling the energy back to this gate here. I was, when I was scanning into it, I was seeing, um, it looked like an advanced AI colony. It didn't look draconian. It looked like they differentiated in several forms of celestial type colonies. They looked insectoid. They looked reptilian. They looked squid. They looked fish. They seemed to have a holodeck of holograms that they used. Um, and everything that holodeck or that hologram energetically seemed to be built upon that upside down cross. And it looks like this ties this gate site here. Um, what I was seeing into an inversion of Christ or into an inversion of crucifixion that was the inversion of life. That was the inversion of ascension. And that this leaves a really disrespectful symbolism of that Satanism encoded in this gate. So it, it's really heavy. It's really heavy um, how they're empowering it here. I'll talk about the sexualization of the obelisk that they're doing here in this six-pointed vortex system that seems to be linking into the ley lines, into the underground tunnel networks. Um, another realm, though, that I've seen that was kind of sitting on top of the uh, necropolis of the Vatican City was I seen like a circus realm that was like on top of that. And at the opening of this circus realm, I seen twin gates of war. So they were like back to back. So these gates seem to kind of shift uh, back to back that they were like mirroring each other. Um, and they were, um, it seems like through those twin gates of war, there was like several holograms of country leaders that were revolving through their twin gates. So I seen like the symbolisms of China. I seen the symbolisms of the U S I seen like a being come through and give like a Freemason handshake. And I could feel that as if it was like on my own hand and I could feel the grabbing of my knuckle where they would let me know that they were a 33 degree mason and then their face kind of shifted into like a master mahan priest so it seemed like they were calling each other here by the original their original names by original mahan priests and i seen um that this was being protected that this revolving twin gate war door was being protected and handed out by the jesuits there was like an illuminati council sitting at the circus and they seemed to do these twin revolving gates of war right over the black spiral vortex underneath and interdimensionally through the Vatican. And then um, I also seen another realm. I seen a realm where I seen that there is a temple of Janus. Um, and this was like another version of the twin face kind of representing those twin war gates. And um, it seemed like in order to actually come in, ethically or through remote view or through you know astrally that the temple of janus was what guarded and actually protected the vatican city and it seemed like you had to enter ethically um through his temple and so i seen the roof i seen the decoration i seen the garland over janus's head and i seen the double-sided face and then i heard the words ruler over time, ruler over past and future. And then I seen, I kind of was shifting it, and it went into this like sort of hypnotism of the now. And I literally seen again, the clock swaying back and forth. And I seen that hypnotizing symbol of that swirl of that concentric circle that draws one into hypnotism. And I seen that that was um, in the temple of Janus. And so I just got this really strong sense that this was the actual Saturnian temple, the Saturnian gate that functions off the Saturnian matrix systems inside the earth. And that this is a etheric temple that is accessed through a dimensional sphere through Vatican city. Um, and again, 
I was seeing that that had access through the rod and staff into the planetary uh, central core of the earth here in Rome, in Vatican City. So I seen a lot coming up, pointing to the 10th sphere in the earth's grids. It seemed like this hijacking doesn't go beyond the 10th sphere, that this entire functioning system is a 10th dimensional global program. Okay, that this hive doesn't go beyond the 10th dimensional sphere of the earth's grids. But they are hooked here. And it is, it is, um, this is how they can, uh, it's like they're suppressing the feminine down in the 90 and but holding that one notch over their head um, in the planetary sphere. I also seen visions of CERN. I seen that they were using CERN to basically encrypt the Jesuit surveillance satellite systems. And then I seen the inversion of the satellite system. So those satellites that we seen, that we see over the earth, that those actually are implanted in the grounds and that that's a reflection of satellites that are actually inside the ground and inside the earth. Um, that they're using that the Jesuits and the military organizations and the CIA um, and then all of their scientific projects and studies therefore follow um, the template that they're giving and providing for this. And they somehow seem to have managed also, it looked like to pull through dark matter here and harness the purest Ross creational forms of it. Um, and then I seen something about accessing the poles of this, and it was pulling me down deeper into hallways of rooms underneath the Vatican. So I got really curious. So I started looking up rooms inside the Vatican. Um, and this was some pictures that I pulled up online because, you know, I want to find things that are matching what I'm seeing. And, um, so I just started energetically kind of using these templates to scan uh, deeper down into some of the rooms, into the hallways underneath the Vatican. And what I actually seen when I came down um, underneath the Vatican is I started seeing the living head of Medusa. It was almost, <laughs> I mean, I was scanning into this the other day and I kept seeing Medusa then too. And I'm like, at first I seen like bat wings on the wall. And then I seen into the living head of Medusa. It was almost if they still had her living head down there. And I could sense that it was the ones that it was the dark squiddy brotherhoods that essentially are the ones who took her head through their dark brotherhood orders. And they've really done a lot of tampering with this. They they've ultimately seen a lot further into, um, this, uh, than I think any of us have. Um, I seen that there was some sort of installation of a mechanical implant in the earth's grids here at the Vatican that they are using to disrupt the mother child mutual gaze. So, you know how a mother's supposed to breastfeed her children and you're supposed to go through that bonding, that gazing process. Um, they inserted some sort of implant here because the clearly the Vatican church has completely disrespected 100% childbearing and mothers. So why wouldn't they continue? Again, I told you that graveyard is all about severing the mother's genetics to the children. So they implanted some sort of destruction program to break that mother child mutual gaze. Um, and then I started getting flashbacks of this all going back to the, the calling, the forced breeding, the sterilization, and how this ties deeper into the Draco agenda. Um, so them taking this Medusa's head, this means so much here. This means so, 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 so much here. Um, it's how they are suppressing and oppressing the feminine for resources um, keep her giving beyond her means, right? So she's always in survival mode. She's always having to, um, give and give and give without love ever being reciprocated. Um, and it's, it's one way that they weaken the, the global feminine force on the earth globally through 10th dimensional gates, particularly, 
particularly in Iran, Iraq, Middle East. These are the 10th dimensional gates on this earth. And they, they love the chaos and the havoc that they wreak here. And it's sickening. It's sickening. It's like I can see this, the, the, the way that they feed off of it here through this gate system. Well, as I was tuning into this more, I heard her head speak to me. I mean, her head literally like looked at me and she was saying to me, Diamond. And she was saying to me that, and she was saying to me that her head appears when the balance between the masculine and the feminine are not healthy, when they are not balanced. And, um, it was just, it was just like an aha moment. Like I just, um, I could see how that represented that. I could see how she, you know, represents sexual abuse, which is what they're doing to this gate site here. This is like openly sexualizing the earth's grids, sexually abusing the earth's grids. She also represents envious rage. She is the psychological archetype of a rape victim that transforms into an abuser. Okay. And they're kind of like holding this captive down here in the Vatican. Many of you know the story of Medusa. And, um, you know, she then goes on to attack men, turning them to stone. She is full of hatred. And now she's punishing all of men that come too close to her. So I think this is representing the process of needing to unlearn the ugly habit of silencing and demonizing victims. Um, this goes back to the Hydra systems, right? The, um, the betrayal of Hercules, who was inducted into the Dark Brotherhood, who slain her own sister's, his own sister's head. Um, and um, I think what's going on here is they're trying to entrap the angry woman. They're trying to entrap the most powerful mad woman, the actual victim, and um, paint her out to be the abuser here. Um, and entrap the most powerful mad woman to ever exist because they couldn't allow her pain body to have existence here because she will stone them all. So they have taken her head and they have taken it as captive underneath the Vatican. Like, why would they be keeping Medusa's head underneath the Vatican? You know, we have to look deeper into this. I also feel that this is why um, Mother Mary kept coming to me tied up in the ropes here as well. Um, I've been seeing this for a long time that she's like kind of tied against her will here. Um, and they're generating energy off of her spirit body here at the Vatican. That's not used for, for good. And then I've also talked about these, um, crossed keys here. So this is the lock and key technology that I've been talking to you guys about. This is called the uh, seals of confession. And this is where they place priesthood in between prayers directly to God to basically cut off one's own connection to the divine, cut off one's own connection to the omnipresence. And this is actually a distortion generationally that they are trying to back up and wound and plug up into the matrix of the woman, um, of the female biology and the female God technology on this earth. Um, essentially, um, these crossed keys here, um, this is an implant into the etheric body, into the earth's grids. This is considered one of the Draco seals and they cap this in the female's reproduction as well. So these red ropes and these two loops here represent the fallopian tubes and they've tied these red ropes to the fallopian tubes to basically insert this seal of confession into the biology. This is one of the Draco seals that we do remove in a Draco seal removal session. Um, but this is encoded into this structure here. This is encoded into the grid. This is encoded into the, the architecture here at Vatican City. So this is what I was talking about with the um, lock and key technologies that they're using here. So they're using together the lock and key technologies with the square in the circle inside the ovum. Um, and so you can see that 
they have their keys of confession implant, but then they also have the actual um, obelisk area and an area where they are sexualizing with their obelisk. This is actually a keyhole, right? This is keyhole technology here that they're using. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is really important. And this is a part of the portal system that actually feeds this black hole Stargate in underneath Rome, the Draco Stargate in Vatican City. Um, one way that I was seeing this is this is three, this is threefold. So the ovum can represent the two fallopian tubes and then actually the uterus system where they have placed their needle. Um, or it can also represent the three um, placements of the feminine genitalia. So it can represent the clitoris, the vagina, and then also like the part of the rectum or like the anal area or whatever. So they're sexualizing this keyhole or this lock and key technology here. Um, and this is what they're really doing all over the world with this squaring the circle technology. These are staple points where they are sexualizing the earth grids to harness the sexual power of the root. Um, they wanna take the root chakra. And this is another reason too, this ties into Pedagonia. Pedagates all of this because of all of the cases that have been forged against the Pope, forged against the Vatican in terms of um, sexual molestation and things like this. Um, essentially there's deeper things that go into why they're doing this with a lot of young men, a lot of young boys, Vatican city itself and the Pope and the religious structures of this, they are all, you know, typically bisexual or predominantly gay. Um, and so the reason for this is because they are trying to sexualize that grid and over dominate and overpower and take over the root chakra of men to anchor the patriarchal power of men through these uh, by dominating and, and owning the power of their root chakra through their sexual acts. Okay, it's really freaking sick how deep this goes. I know this stuff is like really, you know difficult to talk about and things like this. It's kind of difficult for me to talk about. I'm not going to lie. Um, but this is, this is part of what the rituals they're doing here. And this is how they are charging this globally. It's through these, um, this, the sexualization of the obelisk and the square and the circle technology. And now when it does seem to be lock and key technologies as well. So this is what I have for you guys today. Um, some other things I noticed was it seemed like there was underground tunnels when that went to Chiggy's Chapel. There's underground tunnels that run down to Basilica and De San Giovanni, and then tunnel systems that did run down into the river systems. This is a six-pointed vortex system that is linking into ley lines, underground networks, the Spine of Albion, the Devil's Tower network that runs through Azores, and... Um, yeah, and all over the world, globally, where they're running, scoring the circle technologies and obelisks, the obelisks are their needles, it's where they're sexualizing the earth grids, and really they're powering that from gay sex, gay sex, as long as they can keep Medusa's head, as long as they can keep um, any part of the black Madonna or the black feminine power from rising, then this will forever be a power matrix system to the Dracos. So like I said, guys, how can this get better? The transformation has to come from within and divine feminine power has to rise up within the Vatican city, which is something that is going to happen generationally. So the changes and the shifts we want to see could take another 200 years. Um, it could take time, but this is something that is being observed in the monadic structures. So I do feel change is slowly going to happen, but um, this is a major global process of reconstructing the spiritual realms, the ethic realms, the domination and control realms, and the, the entities, genetics, and species that have been able to tamper uh, into these machines, these beast machines, so uh, uh, powerfully here on the earth that it's going to take a lot to come from within to shift and change and move um, everything, all the changes in the world that we want to see.
So this is what I have for you guys today. I hope that you liked this uh, a recap of my remote view of the Vatican City. You can check out my services at indigoangel222.com if you're interested in learning to remote view and in heighten your psychic abilities, psychic intuition. And that session would be the AMP session. Um, and I basically work one-on-one -on -one with someone to enhance the parts of the mind to allow them to be able to see deeper into these uh, types of things. Not this necessarily specifically, um, you know, you can remote view anything anywhere in the world that you feel called or you choose to do so, of course, but and cosmic blessings. I hope you have a beautiful everything.